The fourth chapter in this video series introduces optimal predictive control. The first three chapters then have focused on typical finite horizon, al finite horizon algorithms such as GPC or DMC. Now these algorithms use open loop prediction, that's quite important, and finite horizons primarily for the input horizon but also for the output horizon. And the degrees of freedom tend to be written as just the first NU control moves. GPC therefore assumes that the predicted control trajectory is actually constant after NU steps and this is quite an important observation. However, as was made clear in the previous chapter, <coughs> the assumptions on finite horizons can lead to ill-posed optimizations, unless those horizons are large, which in turn could lead to computation demanding problems or ill-conditioned optimizations and the like. So what are we going to do in this chapter? The main aim is to build on the understanding of what constitutes a well-posed optimization. So the optimization you're doing has to make good sense. We're going to use the insights from the previous chapter in order to propose an MPC algorithm which will always, and that's the key point, always, irrespective of your degrees of freedom, give a well-posed and meaningful optimization. And you'll see irrespective of your horizon choices. And this means you can have confidence in the corresponding control law and in, indeed expect better behavior. And you'll remember if you looked at the previous chapter that we showed that the optimizations you were doing didn't always make sense and therefore you could not necessarily have confidence in the results. Now just a brief reminder, we're not going to talk about constraints in this chapter and we're not going to look at feed forward because those are two extra issues we'll just, which will just confuse the underlying concepts. So we will revisit those in a later chapter. What's a well-posed optimization then? Well, the class of predictions within the optimization, so those are the class of predictions over which you're optimizing, must include several things. They must include the desired closed loop behavior, because if they don't include the desired closed loop behavior, you won't be able to get it as an outcome from your optimization, which seems nonsense. Now, this second sentence looks similar, but it's not quite the same. The closed loop behavior that results from recursively using your optimization must also be within your class of predictions, because otherwise you've got your basically getting a solution from your class of predictions which doesn't match what's actually happening. So again, that means you are using an ill-posed optimization. Now, in general, the actual closed loop behavior that you get is going to be linked to the closed loop poles that you get. Now there's a key point coming here. Those closed loop poles are not usually on the origin. And why is that important? That means that the typical closed loop trajectories and the typical optimum trajectories only converge to the steady state asymptotically. They do not do so in a fixed finite horizon. And what this tells you is that if you use finite horizons, you cannot satisfy these two key points that we've got up here. You can never include, certainly not exactly, the actual or the desired closed loop behavior. So that's why we have problems with GPC and DMC, or we can have problems. Now this figure just illustrates the key issue. If you imagine this red curve is in some sense an ideal closed loop input trajectory. That's what you'd really like to get if you could. But if you use something like GPC, even with a relatively large NU, and here you'll see NU is something like six or seven, it's quite large, but the blue curve is still not that close to the red curve because it gets to a fixed value in a finite time and stays there. And so this is the one of the fundamental problems with GPC. You cannot get close to the predictions that you actually want, or not easily. So in summary, in order to match the desired closed loop behavior, and there's a keyword there, the desired closed loop behavior, the class of predictions within your optimization must include input predictions which 
only converge to the steady state asymptotically. They don't get to the steady state in a finite number of steps. Obviously, the basic setup of GPC cannot do this, except when you let n y and n u tend to infinity, which you won't want to do for various reasons. So we need a new paradigm for predictive control, which allows us to use the sorts of predictions we really want, which is predictions which converge asymptotically. Now, how are we going to ensure that the predictions used within the optimization include the desired behavior? Because that's another um, requirement that we've set ourselves. How do we ensure that the predictions converge asymptotically rather than in finite time? And that includes the inputs. What we're going to do here is we're going to save some time. If you look at the historical literature, it took the community um, close to 10 years to get to this inside, but we're going to go straight to the answer because going through all the interim steps isn't particularly helpful. Right, it's assumed that for the unconstrained case, and here's a key thing, by one way or another, I'm not going to say how for now, we can determine the global optimum closed loop trajectory when the system is linear. So this is an assumption. We have to be able to assume that, otherwise we don't know what we mean by optimum. Now what we're going to do is we're going to define the global optimum relative to a performance index with infinite horizons. So we're going to come up with some performance index and say whichever control strategy does the best with respect to this performance index is our global optimum. Now you might argue this is arbitrary to some extent, and I would agree with you. But if you haven't got some measure of what is good performance and what is bad performance, then you've got no means of determining what is good and bad and what is best anyway. So we have to start from somewhere like this. So what definition are we going to use? We're going to use a classical performance index, very much like the ones we used for GPC. Here it is. But the only difference is you'll notice the horizon is chosen to be infinite. Now, whether we use both these control terms, the um, distance from the steady state squared or the rate change, doesn't really matter. Here we're giving the um, structure of a typical performance index. And the key thing is we're using infinite horizons. We're also assuming, for simplicity, that the set point is fixed in the future, because that means we can get a meaningful definition for the expected steady state value of the input. So the key thing then is the performance index uses infinite horizons for both the future inputs and the future outputs. So nothing is admitted and you've got full flexibility. And this is how we're defining our global optimum. OK, some summaries then. The key weakness of GPC is the use of finite horizons. In order to ensure a well-posed optimization, you must include in the class of predictions those which converge asymptotically rather than in a finite time. And this class must also include the global optimum. And what we're doing is we're going to consider that the global optimum, although it could be considered to be arbitrary, we're going to define it using a fixed performance index.